So real quickly, I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, so my name is Sue, and I used to live in Hawaii for many years, and I worked for the HPEP project for about seven years. Um, and then this last year, I actually have moved back to the mainland. So I live in Chicago now. Um, that's where I'm from. And so I'm broadcasting to you from there, which is kind of crazy. So. <laughs> I'm so glad you all um, are here today. I know that time is precious, so thank you so much for taking the time out to do this. Um, and I'm going to get started, so I'm going to flip to the PowerPoint presentation. And you'll just hear my voice and see, see the screen. Um, all right, so this is just kind of our introduction. So my name is Sue Morazic. Um, Christy Chong is our educational specialist, so she's on the call too, so she's kind of troubleshooting with me um, and helping with all the admin stuff. So, And so just real quickly, kind of the schedule of how things are going to go for the next six weeks. Um, today we're doing Building Confidence. Uh, next week on the 21st, communication, then cooperation, setting limits, um, solving problems, and friendship skills. Um, so those are all the successive weeks. So they'll all be on Thursdays um, at the same time, so noon for you. And then the last session is a bookmaking session, and that's really hands-on. You get to take home a book. Um, you get to do an activity with your child or your children. Um, so I really encourage you to kind of check that out. That will be obviously on site in Hawaii. Um, I won't be there. I'll be in Chicago, but um, that will be there for you, and you'll be getting more information on um, time and place for that, and that's on the 29th of October. So there's a, a little bit of a break, but they're going to bring everyone together on that day. So today we're going to be talking about building confidence in our preschoolers. So I wanted to start with just some quotes that I really like that kind of speak to building confidence and, um, you know, building your child into someone that you want them to be and that they want to be. Um, so the first one is every child needs one person who is crazy about them. Um, I really love this quote, and I think if we think back on our own childhoods, you can think about someone who was that person for you. Um, sometimes it's a parent, sometimes it's not. You know, sometimes it's an auntie or an uncle or a teacher um, or a neighbor. But someone in your life, I'm sure you can think of, um, who noticed you in a positive way and made you feel like it was safe to be you and that you were celebrated. Um, so. The next quote is, a baby does not exist. It is always a baby and someone. So I just stumbled upon this one, and I really like it, because um, it kind of switches, I think, switches your perspective into thinking about how important you are in your child's life. Um, and you know, when a child is young, let's say from zero to five, it really is that child and someone. You know, they can't care for themselves um, and you're constantly there or whomever is caregiving is constantly there. So that relationship is so key and so important and you have a lot of power, um, you know, to influence your child. So I want you to feel that. So in the handouts that were sent to you by Christy a couple of weeks ago, um, and if you didn't get them or anything happened, I'm, um, of course, it'll be posted and she can resend to you, of course. Um, so on that, if you have them in front of you or if you pull them up in your email, um, or if you don't, you can just kind of follow along to the screen. But there's a checkup A, and it starts on page 40. The page numbers are in the upper left corner. It's kind of strange, but... Um, so at the bottom there, right under the week six, it says check up A, messages from the past. So parents build children's beliefs about who they are and what they can do in life. So take a minute, um, close your eyes, or not. Um, if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, then go ahead. And just kind of think back on messages that your parents gave you um, about yourself as you were growing up. 
So sometimes those are really positive messages. Um, you know, you can think back on good memories. Sometimes they're really not. Um, you know, some of us don't have the greatest memories, maybe, of our parents, um, of our childhood. Sometimes they're really hard. And so um, just kind of thinking back on what those messages were that you received or what types of interactions you, you had um, growing up. I'll just give you a few seconds to kind of do that. If you have some paper, um, you can write them down or you can just kind of hold them in your mind. And then if you have your packet on page 41 is that second question. So how many of these messages still influence your self-confidence and how you think about yourself now? Um, I think that's really important and I think sometimes we don't remember that. Um, but if you think about, you know, for example, let's say growing up, you know, you really didn't love school and your sibling really loved school or your cousin really loved school. Um, and you were sent the messages that, you know, you weren't very good at school because maybe it was hard for you to concentrate or sit there and, um, you know, take notes or to just to digest things or whatever the reason was, um, you know, school wasn't your thing. And so as we grow up, those messages that we received as a child, um, they still play out in our lives. So maybe that means, you know, you don't, you're in a job and you think that, you know, you'd want to move up. Um, in your company or in your business and that requires you to take more classes, but you really avoid that um, because school is not your thing. Or maybe it makes you nervous to take a class. Um, you feel like you're not going to do well. Um, so you have, kind of have this mental image or, or frame of mind about who you are. And a lot of that is based on the messages that you received growing up. It's based on a lot of other things too, um, but you can kind of piece together maybe um, how that still influences your life today, even as an adult. And then kind of moving on to how we then tend to pass those things on to our children. So oftentimes, the way that we were raised or parented or the messages that we received about ourselves are then the messages that we give our kids. Um, you know, that's not always the case. I think sometimes when People come from a really hard childhood. Sometimes they want to do the complete opposite. So they intentionally say, you know, I'm not going to do that. Um, and they are very different um, with their own children. But I, I would w be willing to guess that during times of stress or times when, you know, we're not our best selves, um, that that person still comes out. Because that's what we know. Um, that's not something to be embarrassed about or ashamed of. That's, it's just being human. That's what we know, um, so that's what we're going to do. So just kind of thinking about what are the qualities that you want to see your child develop. Um, you know, the examples they give are competence, care for others, respect for environment, um, you know, do you want them to have respect for elders, do you want them to be creative, do you want them um, to feel independent, you know, I mean you have dreams and thoughts of what you want for your children. Um, so I'll just give you a minute to kind of think about those, um, what those are for you. And you can write them on that same piece of paper or um, I don't know if you have your phone there, you can text them in your phone or however it is that you kind of keep notes. And then finally, just the time to start building your child's self-confidence is now. So I don't want you to think that it's too late or, oh gosh, I've been, you know, I've really been acting um, out the things that happened to me in my childhood and I don't want to do that anymore. Um, or, you know, whatever you may be thinking. I think there's always an opportunity to do differently. So I want you to feel good about that. And to feel, you know, the first step is you're, you're taking this webinar and you, you're learning new things. So you're right in the right place. And, you know, just think of a few positive messages that um, you'd like to offer your child today or for the next week or until, you know, until we meet again. 
maybe think of some things that you can say to your child um, and recognize them positively because that's really the first step in building their confidence. I'm sure if you think back on the person who, you know, when we just a few minutes ago were talking about the people in our own lives who built our confidence, when you think about them, I'm guessing you think that you think about how they made you feel and they made you feel accepted and loved who you were. Um, so what are some of those things that you can notice about your child that you enjoy about them, about who they are? Just kind of think about that for a minute. So just following up on um, that last comment, so making those, those positive statements or thinking about those positive things you can say to your child, I do want you to think about um, a little bit about kind of the quality of them. So, well, first I want to say, if you feel like you're really not providing a lot of positives, you know, at all, or, I mean, I'm sure you're not not doing it, not at all, but, you know, if you're thinking to yourself, wow, I, I really haven't been doing this that much, then I would say anything is good. You know, I wouldn't want to stress you out by thinking, um, having you overthink it. So, if, um, you know, if you haven't been doing it um, really regularly, then just start being positive. And I would welcome you to use good job or to be smiling more or whatever it is. Now, if you're already providing some positive things, um, then I would kind of invite you to think about the structure of them or think about the quality of the, what, you, what you're saying to your child. Um, so here's just some examples. So more than good job, because good job's very general and it's a very um, broad statement. So a three-year-old or four-year-old, um, of course they understand that when you say good job, you're happy with them, but they don't necessarily connect it to why or how they can repeat the behavior to get you know, a positive um, affirmation from you again. So these are just a few examples. I'm sure you have many things happening in your house that you could apply to your own life. Um, but so for example, instead of good job saying, you know, I love the way that you played with your sister today. Uh, you decided to share your toys with her. Um, so that's just something very specific. You're giving specific behavior. You're saying, I liked what you, I like that you played with your sister. And then you're saying, what did you like about it? You shared your toys. Um, I noticed and listen, I noticed you listened to your dad when he asked you to get dressed. He only had to ask you one time. Thank you. Um, so again, you're pointing out what was the behavior. So I noticed. That's a, also you know, something to keep in mind. That's a really good way to start a positive statement. I noticed. Um, so that kind of forces you as the adult into the mind frame of what did I notice? You know, you're, you're going to describe the behavior. So I noticed you listened to your dad when he asked you to get dressed. Um, he only had to ask you once. Thank you. Um, so what you're doing by providing that positive um, statement is you're reinforcing the behavior. You're telling them specifically what you want to see again. And then finally, you're waiting so patient for, patiently for me to check out. Uh, for example, if you're at the store, thank you for being quiet. So again, just making those statements kind of more specific so your child knows exactly what it is that you like. And then, you know, in checkup B, I'm just going to quickly go through the this part. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is really what I would encourage you to kind of do at home or um, do like outside of this session because it takes a little bit more time and I think it's a good um, conversation starter with um, your spouse or your partner or whomever is caregiving for your child. Um, it would be a good conversation to kind of have with them. So at the top there, it just says list um, three encouraging statements that you might want to say to your child. So that would kind of be a good place to maybe check in and write down those more specific statements. Um, and then the following questions are just kind of checking in with you and the type of encouragement that you received um, when you were growing up. So um, the second question is just a scale of how much encouragement did you receive. Um, and then the third question is check the methods of encouragement you used in your home growing up. So how did your parent or your caregiver show you that encouragement? Maybe they didn't at all, but if they did, you know, how was it shown? And you might 
see a correlation between, this is just the next page, um, correlation between these two things. So the next part is how much encouragement um, is a part of your parenting. So see if that kind of aligns with how much you received. Um, and I know sometimes the idea is that, you know, children should be seen and not heard, and maybe that's how you were raised, kind of this old school way. Um, and maybe that's, if you think about it, that's kind of how you interact then with your child, because that's what you know. Um, you know, it's maybe uncomfortable for you to provide that positive encouragement. Um, but it is really important for your child's, you know, confidence and self-esteem to do that. And then finally, what type of encouragement do you give your child? And just kind of seeing if that's the type that was given to you. And then finally, sometimes it's difficult for me to be encouraging because why? Um, so that may be because I never received encouragement or, you know, my, the encouragement that I received was confusing or it was good one day, bad the next. I, could, I never could quite figure out um, how to be encouraged by my parent. Um, so maybe that's something that, you know, happened in your house and that you struggle with. So then flipping back to the beginning of the lesson, again, if you have your paper with you, if you don't, that's fine. You can look back um, later or, um, you know, look it up in your email if you, have, if you have access to that. So basically the goal of this lesson and this week is to provide um, daily confidence building messages to your child. Um, so starting with those positive statements that we just talked about a few minutes ago. Um, and then there's other things you can do. So the first two paragraphs just kind of describe what it is like to, um, you know, send those messages to your child. And that sometimes, you know, in that second paragraph it says, at first your child may resist your efforts at providing positive feedback. This is something they've never experienced from you. Um, this is a way that you're not used to talking. It's definitely going to be weird, <laughs> you know, for both of you at first. So you might feel weird doing it and they might feel a little strange receiving it. But I really encourage you to keep trying. You know, it's okay. When we're, when we're doing something new, we don't do it perfectly. Um, and if you keep trying, then obviously it's going to feel more natural eventually. So some of the things um, you can do is, you know, emphasize the positive. So just like we were talking about, you can notice what it is that they're doing right. So finding a time during the day when they are on task and they are doing the right thing. So, <clears throat> oh, you're sitting so nicely, um, you know, with your brother. Or like the, the previous example was, you're playing so nicely with your sister, you shared your toys. Um, so I think uh, thinking of those times throughout the day when your child is doing um, and is on task. And then being sincere in providing that positive feedback. So your child will be able to tell whether or not you're being for real um, and whether or not you're just kind of going through the motion. So are, if you are noticing something that they're doing right, then of course it's going to be something sincere coming from you. Oh yeah, so being sincere with providing um, that positive feedback and allowing your child to show others what they know well. Um, so knowing, thinking of something that your child does well already, so whether that's you know, art and painting or sports, um, you know, providing an opportunity for them to show that off. Um, so whether that's, you know, inviting people over to have a day of art at home or going to the beach and playing some kind of sport with people so that they're able to um, engage in the activity that they know that they do well. Uh, letting your child help. So that's kind of a big one. Um, I think sometimes that's hard for a lot of parents to let kids help with things around the house. And, you know, sometimes you might be thinking, well, it's going to be a lot more, <laughs> it's going to be a lot more difficult if I let them help me do this, like dry the dishes or put something away. It's going to take a long time, you know, because a three and four year old moves slower <laughs> than you do. Um, but, you know, it, the point is not to get it done fast. The point would be to allow them to engage with you and to show them that you trust them um, to do something or, and to help you with something. So you're building their confidence by doing that. 
allowing them to make a choice. So that kind of goes along with allowing them to help. So you can control that choice. So if you're asking them, for example, you know, what do you want to wear today? And you pull out, you know, three different options. So you're controlling the options, but you're still, the child will still feel like you're giving them a choice and that you care about what they what they want. Um, so what you're communicating is that you're hearing them and that they have a voice um, instead of you always dictating what's going on. You know, sometimes it's appropriate for you to dictate what's going on, but there are times when you you can allow choice um, and that will really help them to feel, um, just to feel more confident. And then asking their opinion. So again, that kind of goes along with allowing them a choice, giving them a voice um, about what they want. And then finally allowing them to try. So I think that again goes along with um, letting them do things <laughs> and letting them try new things that they may not be good at. Because if you think about an adult, um, someone you think of as confident, there's someone who's willing to try new things, right? And willing to make a mistake because uh, we're never going to be perfect the first time we try. So I think you start building those skills in your child as um, as young as they are and allowing them to do new things and supporting them with that and not criticizing them. And then on this, uh, the next page on page 40, oh, on page 40, at the, it has um, a little box of do's and don'ts. Again, this is in the packet that Christy sent you, so um, you can check it out. But I like these because it's just kind of a quick reference that you can look at um, and remind yourself. You could maybe put this um, around your house to remind yourself or write them down, any, anywhere that you think would kind of trigger your memory. So these are kind of the things that we just went over. So do provide positive feedback daily. And then, you know, there's some information about how the quality of that feedback. So describing the behavior that you want. Um, offer opportunities to try new things. Um, you know, there and these don't, things don't have to involve money. So I don't want you to think like, oh, I have to, you know, pay to go to this museum or whatever. You know, it can be anything. It can be digging in your yard. Um, maybe that's something you never allowed them to do before, or it could be, um, I don't know. You know, there's a there's a million ideas that are really free. It could be allowing them to help you fold laundry, allowing them to do things around the house that you don't normally ask their help with. So it doesn't have to cost anything. Um, and then making time to connect with your child. So all of those things, all of those ideas about um, what you can do to offer new opportunities are times to connect. Um, so that's really what you're fostering there is just a better connection. And then just don't, so things to avoid. Comparing your child to another one, so whether that's a sibling or a cousin um, or someone at school, you know, that's really what gets at the root of not feeling good about yourself. I mean, as adults, you can think about that. So when are the times we feel the worst about ourselves is when we're thinking, oh, this other person has it all together, and I don't. Um, so it's the same with kids. And then using sarcasm with positive verbal feedback, you know, an example of that would be something like, oh, awesome, you know, awesome job. You know, you, let's say your child drops something on the floor. Awesome, you know, great, great job. So you're the words that you're saying are positive words, like, oh, that's good, but you're saying it in a sarcastic way, which we do as adults to each other, um, you know, but a young kid doesn't understand that and can be kind of confusing. And then finally, don't take over your child's activities. So this can also be hard, um, especially if you're like a neat freak um, or you don't. You're a perfectionist yourself um, and you see your child, you know, making something or doing something and it's, um, it's not quote unquote correct or it's messy um, and you kind of take over to make sure that they do it right. Um, that, that's not really important, the correctness of how they're doing it. It's really um, that they're experiencing it and that they're allowing themselves to try something new. So I was going to go over these scenarios which are really good. I love them but I really don't believe I have time. I only have like four more minutes, um, and then I want to allow time for questions. But basically, um, it's just a scenario that talks about um, the quality of connection time. So when your child is asking for your attention, just thinking about whether you're giving it um, totally. So in this scenario, the child asks for the, the dad to come play Legos with him. And this dad obviously is like halfway watching TV and is like, ah, yeah, okay, okay, oh yeah, that looks nice, you know. And then 
this child is the dad actually turns off the TV, gets on the floor, and plays with him. So just kind of thinking about you know when your child is asking for your attention, are you are you really stopping and making that time to connect, or are you just kind of halfway paying attention? And I know in this day and age of phones and everything, it's it's hard to have full attention really on anything, um, but kind of being more intentional about that and making that one-on-one -on -one time a priority. So I wanted to quickly show you the parents' um, tip and activity cards. Some of them will give you um, tips, so they're just kind of reminders of the things that we've talked about today um, and what helps to build self-confidence. And then, you know, they have your ideas. So what are some things that you could do with your child to spend that quality time? And that's different for every family. Um, and that's different for your schedule and your lifestyle. So feel free to kind of think of your own. And then they just have a bunch of activity cards. So again, these were given to you. So don't worry about, like, writing them down or remembering them. Um, you do have them. But they're just some games and activities that you're able to try out with your child um, over this next week. And really with the purpose being just building that stronger connection um, and having that quality time. So it's not, the point of it is not to master these games or to, you know, um, love every idea or every card that is here. You don't, you definitely don't have to. Um, it's really just about um, spending that quality time and carving out that time during the day to do those. So please, I invite you to check those out. And then finally, so for homework, um, if this is for next week, so before we meet again, just think, kind of talk and debrief about the ways you were parented. So some of those questions that popped up at the beginning of the lesson, um, you know, either, either with your partner, if you haven't already, a friend or a sibling, um, I think it's really important to kind of work through those because um, when you start to think about them, it could be something you've never really considered um, and there can be some feelings that come up. So I think it's good to talk that over with someone. You know, write down three ways you can positively notice your child this week. Um, put it on your fridge and remind yourself. Um, so when I was in Hawaii and I was doing these sessions live with people, um, I would give them a magnet and have them write down at least three things you could notice. Um, I'm sure you can think of some right now and just pop it on your fridge and that's something that you see walk by, you know, every day. Um, practice a few of the activity cards that I just showed you and pre-plan some time to use them. So when you know you have literally five, ten minutes during the day, um, just pull them out and kind of see if there's anything that you might be able to try. And then finally, just planning those five to ten minutes in your day for that one-on-one -on -one attention to your child. And this could be really special if you have more than one child and you're really, you know, that's not something you've intentionally planned before. So they love, love that time with you. And then finally, you know, back to our original quote that there is no baby. I mean, maybe you don't have a baby anymore, but there is no preschooler, there is no three-year-old, there is a baby and someone. And you are that someone. So you do have a lot of power in this situation, you know, positive power um, to change the way that your relationship is with your child. Um, and it's done every day by these little things that you're able to do. So I really thank you for listening today. Um, I hope you're able to come next week and for the rest of the weeks.